Hello, welcome back to Mrs. Olson's Wretched Repair Shop. It's been a minute. This is a COVID-19 special edition, and it's gonna have minimal editing, so keep your expectations nice and low. Mrs. Olson's Wretched Repair Shop! Today we are going to talk about how to give a brass instrument a bath. Um, which can be a little scary the first time because of course you don't want to break anything. Um, I'm gonna recommend if you have a really nice instrument that you proceed with so much caution that it's almost terrifying. The only trumpet I have with me while we're here in quarantine is my nice trumpet. Um, so I'm not going to make a video of me actually using the bathtub because I do not want to risk trying to film a video and drop something on my nice trumpet. So today we're gonna to use this bed that I'm sitting on as a, as a fake bathtub so I can show you what you would do in the water, all right? Um, the most important thing, the first thing, you need to take your valves out. The valves do not go in the tub. Repeat, the valves do not go in the tub. The other most important thing, when you lay them down, you need to put them somewhere where there's not hair. Okay, that might sound gross, but don't just throw them on like the floor mat next to the, t the, the shower, because they will get covered in hair and that's disgusting. So you also need to keep them in order, one, two, three. On some horns, they don't have the little numbers etched on them. So you have to be very careful when you take them out, put them somewhere clean and high up so animals and little siblings cannot get into them, and keep them in order, one, two, three. The reason these can't go in is because of the felts that are on the, the valves they're not supposed to be wet. So, okay. Remove your mouthpiece. Glug, glug, glug. In the tub. Remove this table slightly so that Mr. Olsen can see. There we go. All right. Next, you want to remove your valve caps. Again, being very careful. Now, you want to use warm water. You only need a, you know, the tallest part of your trumpet here. Now, if you're using a baritone, you might need a little more water. Um, and trombones, obviously, you'll separate your two pieces. <clears throat> Move valve caps. Now, once your valves are out, obviously, you do not need to follow the procedure of holding the valve down to remove a slide because it's no longer airtight. So you can just go ahead and take out your slides. <clears throat> and putting them in the water. Now, People always ask what kind of soap to use. You want to use something in the neighborhood of like Dawn, like a gentle, a gentle hands dish soap. Do not use anything super corrosive like Ajax or like Lysol or anything. You want to keep all that far away. Use like a gentle, a gentle cleanser. Um, I personally have used um, like the dish soap we use is from the local market. It's very gentle on the hands. It's got, a, it's got a fruit like odor to it, but it's not super strong. Something like that is perfect. Um, if you don't have anything like that, just use Dawn or a, um, what's it called? The, um, I guess it's called Ajax, right? What am I thinking of? It's the orange dish soap. You know what I mean? The one that everyone uses. Joy, that's what it's called, Joy. All right, put a little bit of that in the water as it's filling in the tub. Um, but again, not too much. You're not giving it a bubble bath. You just want a little bit. Okay, then you put your whole instrument in. Being very careful that these pieces aren't clanging into each other. You want to do this very carefully. Now, while it's soaking, I would go ahead and put a clean towel out on your counter or some surface. For the sake of this, I'm going to pretend this table is my counter, okay? So, uh, you want to have that ready for when you're done scrubbing the parts. Now, to do this, you're gonna need a couple things. Um, I know times are lean right now with COVID and stores aren't open, um, but you can go on eBay or anywhere like that and find a basic cleaning kit for your instrument. And in case you've made it this far and missed the beginning, woodwinds do not do this. This is only brass. Saxophones are not brass instruments, even though they are metal, nor are flutes. Just making sure we're covering that. All right, you need a little mouthpiece brush. If you play, um, if you play tuba, you're gonna need a kiddie pool to do this, or a garden hose. You can't do it in the bathtub. But uh, for trombone, baritone, um, horn, and trumpet, you need this little guy. The trombone ones tend, tend to be a little rounder, but this will work. And you're also gonna need 
what's called a snake. These come in all different materials. They can be plastic. I like this kind of um, slinky kind. I don't know. I just find it more aesthetically pleasing. Um, so once everything is soaked for a little while, I usually start with the big boy here. So you're going to take your snake and you're just going to start running it through gently all of the little tubies. Now, when it pops out, it's going to spray, so don't put it right up close to your face because <laughs> you're going to get soapy, dirty, spitty water in your face. So either do it underwater or put your hand there so it doesn't spray you. All right, and you're going to try and get into all... Oh, I forgot to take a slide up. Oh, that's because mine has a little bolt. Sorry about that. It's been a while. I don't think any of you have these on your horn, but if you do, you just very carefully you don't want to lose these little guys down the drain. That would be the worst. Guys, there we go. All right. And that'll get rid of your third bath slide. All right. Anyway, as I was saying, going through all the holes, working that water through there. On these bigger valve holes, this brush is a little small. You still run it through, but then you might want to take your mouthpiece brush and kind of make little circles and go in both sides, get as much grossness out of there as you can. Okay? Now, a couple spots that are trouble spots on brass. I'm going to have Mr. Olson get closer here. The threads of these can get gross and in between also. Now, here's the, here's the takeaway. You do not want to do this because the this brush is very harsh. It's like when you wash a car. You wouldn't use a scrubby brush to wash your car because you'd damage the paint. On this, you would damage the lacquer. So for that, you're going to take a rag, a very small rag, um, like an old t-shirt, something kind of thin that you can cut up, and you're just going to kind of very gently put a piece of fabric through there. You might need a friend to help you or hold it between your knees, and you're going to rub in between those little crevices. Okay, you do not want to use a brush. The brush is only for the inside because the inside is not lacquered. All right, these threads, again, you can kind of use a cloth, press into the threads, get as much as you can. If you want to be very delicate, you probably could do this kind of thing. Okay, but you want to keep this away from the lacquer. So I would be very careful. I would stick to using a soft cloth. All right, slides. <clears throat> Same thing, you're gonna use your two different brushes, your snake and your mouthpiece brush, and all these little tubules, clean out as much as you can. Now, on these parts here that are um, unlacquered, that go inside the tubes, you're gonna wanna, again, take your cloth, pivot, you know, let me get my cloth here, I'm gonna move my valves, which you're not gonna do, because you're, you're smart, you have two cloths. All right. And you're gonna wipe all the schmutz off of there. And then you can't do that here. You might wanna do the put your finger in there and twist. Get as much as you can off of there. You'll see it leaves little rings and I'm not even using water. So that just shows you how bad this little guy is. And you're gonna repeat that process with all of your valve slides. All right, your valve caps. This is where the gunk kind of drains out of your valves. Thanks gravity. Um, again, use your cloth, put your finger in there and kind of Swirl it around. The water should loosen up more of it, so you'll get more than I'm getting right now. But kind of swirl around like that. All right, your mouthpiece. I always run blazing hot water over my mouthpiece in a separate, like in the, in the sink. Don't put blazing hot water right on the horn. The mouthpiece can handle it. Um, blazing hot water to kill any germs, especially with what's going on right now. Then use your mouthpiece brush, get all in there, clean that sucker out. Okay, once everything has been wiped down, all of your tubes have been wiped down with a cloth, you scrub the inside with your snake, your mouthpiece brush, you're going to take it out of the tub. Make sure after you start taking pieces out of the tub that you are rinsing them under a stream of non-soapy water. Now, the biggest thing that winds up happening for beginners, they take it out of the tub, and they go like this, and water goes pouring out all over the floor, okay? Make sure you drain it over the tub a few times and let the water drip out or mom and dad are gonna yell at you because you made a big puddle. All right, then of course you've laid out your clean towel on the counter, and you're gonna lay your instrument down. All right, and you're gonna 
pull all your slides back out. Now, this is the perfect time, because everything's clean, to go ahead and oil and grease. And your valve caps are interchangeable. So if those get out of order, it's not a huge deal. here. Okay. Grease. Remember, grease, uh, I personally like this. It's Selmer, but Bach makes a similar one. It's like, it looks like red jelly. This is the best. If you can find this, it's the good stuff. The little stuff that comes in the little chapsticks or the little Carmex looking dish things, that all works fine. But if you're, if you're buying it new and you're listening to this advice, get this stuff. It lasts forever. I've had this since college because a dab will do you, as we say. All right, so I'm gonna go out on a limb here and assume I cleaned everything, which for the sake of this video, I have not. So don't be like, I see a uh, green gum. Here. Probably do. All right, when you grease, you put a little dab toward the top of the slide. That right there is plenty, because this is a big slide. You'll need even less for the little guys. You take one side, and you roll it around like this. And do just one side, because otherwise you can't twist. Other side. Boom. Twist. Work it in. Then when you can't see the globiness anymore, go ahead and slide it up. Put your slide back in. Okay? If excess grease piles up there, just take your cloth and wipe and get rid of it. Okay? You're going to repeat that process a bunch of times. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to pop these in real quick. So, I grease. And I'm also not going to put those screws back on right now for the sake of this video. Get all your little guys greased and back in. Cool. Your valve caps, which we wiped out in the tub. Go ahead and screw those puppies back on. Um, as far as oil is concerned, while I'm putting these on, uh, there are two main types. There's a clear, um, I think it's petroleum-based oil. The best one is Alcas, A-L-C-A-S-S. -S -S. It's got a little rocket chip that says fast. That's the best stuff. And again, a bottle should last you a good long while. Um, there's also this type called Blue Juice. It looks kind of like Kool-Aid. Um, this stuff is great because it cleans the instrument as well as oils. However, you never want to mix. The reason I have both is my French horn, I use blue juice, and on my trumpet, I use outcast. So you never mix. Um, the reason for that is sometimes you can accidentally cause a chemical reaction, especially if you're using a different brand of the clear, and it, uh, it, it'll seize up your trumpet like rock candy. It'll cause some sort of chemical reaction. I don't know the details, but it'll, it'll crystallize essentially in your instrument, and it's effectively ruined. So do not mix oils. If you know you've used clear valve oil on an instrument, do that. I don't think any of you at the Hawk are currently using this. So if you're watching this and you're one of my students, just don't even mess with the blue stuff. All right. Okay, so you've kept your valves in the right order because you're a good human. When I oil, beginners take. Beginners always take out their valves to oil them. Now in the bath you obviously do, but when you're oiling on a day-to-day -day basis, um, just leave them in like this. Two reasons. One, you can't get them out of order if you never take them out. Bath excluded. Two, when you put the oil on, if you're holding the valve up and doing this, it's just gonna drip all over you and the floor. If you keep them in the valve casing like this and have it at an angle, the oil just drips down into the horn. That's the way to go. Now, this is the biggest thing that happens with beginners. The valves are not aligned properly, and you go to play and you get <sighs> and the air won't go through, and then you're like, my trumpet's broken. Not broken, it just means the little holes haven't aligned with the slides. So what I always do, okay, I don't even put the mouthpiece on, I just check with air. I twisted them clockwise till they clicked. If you can get air through, it's fine. I didn't screw them in yet either, you're just checking. Now if one is out of order, you'll get this. No air. Keep twisting till you feel it settle in and the air will flow through. Once that has happened, screw these puppies in. 
Some trumpets click more than others. Um, I've noticed a lot of those kind of off-brand, like the Mendinis and the Celios, that are the, you know, the ones that you buy on Amazon from China that aren't very good. They tend not to click into place. You just have to find the sweet spot. Um, Fox Yamahas, those those tend to um, tend to be more easy to align. So then you want to go ahead and let the oil get worked in, twist it a few different ways. Just pump your valves a lot, get that oil all throughout the trumpet. Check your air one more time, and you should be good to go. Now, once you've reached this point, um, the trumpet will still be a little moist because you just took it out of the uh, took it out of the tub. So you're gonna want to dry it very gently. Don't want to use a rough, a rough, you know, don't be grabbing like some ruffled dish towel and you're gonna, you're gonna damage your instrument. So again, nice soft cotton. This is a specific cloth for cleaning instruments. If you have one of those, that's even better. Um, and once it's dry, you're gonna find little spots, water spots, little spots of muck. Um, like here, Mr. Wilson, if you'll zoom in. Right here, I've got a lot of black corrosion type stuff. No, it's corrosion, but like black gunk. And you're just gonna have to use some elbow grease and kind of try and get as much of that off of there as you can because if you leave it on there, it can lead to permanent uh, discoloration of the instrument. Okay, I think that covers everything with basic trumpet maintenance. We covered grease, we covered oil in the bath, we covered what materials to use. I hope that was helpful and that during this quarantine you can find the time to um, purchase if you don't have these oils and uh, grease and brushes. Now's the time, I guess. Um, try and get a kit that has all of them. Um, again, eBay. Um, I know Amazon's up and running. Um, yeah, so hopefully you guys can take this time and uh, play your instrument. Thanks for watching.